medicine. The miracle of modern human civilization. And yet, what price have we paid to progress in the medical sciences? At what cost are we willing to progress further? Very deep questions, and yet ones we are perhaps too frightened to ask. And so is the subject of tonight's tale of intrigue. My dear friends, I ask as always that you sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because now it's time to listen. I feel that sometimes I get caught up in thought. My friends always tell me that I put too much focus on what I do for others and tend to slip out of focus with my actual life. I tend to focus too much on my research and classes than I do anything else. I ended up breaking off my last relationship because I felt that my work was getting in the way, but I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> I'm too close to curing Alzheimer's disease now. I can't just drop everything for one person especially when that person might benefit from this discovery. <laughs> Those relationships are petty, anyways. Finding actual love is very rare, and everyone has <laughs> at least one divorce in their lifetime. Well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people do. People in general just take up too much time. I usually only have time to work with people and animals who are working just as hard as I am to cure this disease. I feel like no one supports me well enough to let me work all the time. Not even my boss understands. I am so close. I can't afford to waste my time on people. The cure I've developed is already moving on to the second stage of animal testing. The apes we are using have already had these conditions induced upon them in previous studies. So. I'm basically doing cleanup over what damage others cause to these animals. So far, these animals appear to be making a smooth recovery. They are no longer showing signs of memory loss, and their temperament has begun to stabilize. These are good signs, and I hope these signs continue for the near future. I accidentally stuck myself with one of the injection needles earlier. It contained a concentrated dose of the enzyme I was using, along with a mixed-in enzyme for added effect. I didn't receive the full dose, which is a good sign, but I am starting to space out more, and I'm starting to get a bit more hungry. The cravings started out simple. I craved a bit of chip here and there, a soda, Simple things that I could get from a vending machine within the building. But then, I started to crave meat. Not just any kind of meat. Tough, stringy meat. To satisfy this craving, I went out and bought some jerky from the vending machine. <laughs> Simple enough. It was satisfying enough while I worked on compiling the data from the previous experiment. But the cravings were starting to build, and I continued to go into deep thought. I spaced out, and five minutes had passed. All of my chips and jerkies were gone, and I had two new bags of jerky. I wasn't sure where they came from, but before I could go and investigate this new discovery, my computer interrupted my thinking process and began signaling me it was time to go and check on the apes again. Same results, slow progress. But at least I'm receiving progress, except for one of the apes. One of the apes looks like it's barely awake. It can hardly sit upright, and it just has drool hanging at the edge of its mouth. <sighs> Disgusting. Oh well. I suppose Test Trial 8 was a bust. 
But isn't that the needle I stuck myself with? Maybe, but it doesn't matter. It just seems like his behavior's changed. His food tray seemed empty, so I decided to fill it up again. The ape didn't immediately move to greet me. It just stared blankly at me. I left the room and came back with a larger plate of food. When I came back, the ape stared very intently at me, like I was some prey or enemy that it wanted to attack. It flared its nostrils and stared at the food. It began pounding on its chest, demanding that I put the plate down. I freaked out and nearly dropped the plate as I placed it down. The ape shoved me out of the way and began devouring the plate of food so quickly that I couldn't look away from it for a single moment. It began pounding on its chest again, demanding more food. I'd never seen anything like this before. I closed the door behind me and ran out as the ape began to bang on the door, demanding more. I arrived back with an enormous bag of food and rushed back to the door as quickly as I could. As soon as I opened the door, the ape grabbed the food with one arm and shoved me out of the door. It shut the door behind it and threw the bag of food on the floor. It began tearing violently at the casing that was the bag and began ripping handfuls of food out and devouring it. I watched the ape intently, and after only two handfuls of food, the ape growled at me and began pounding on its chest again. I moved out of the way of the window and locked the door. The ape stopped pounding and went back to savagely devouring the enormous bag of food. It was truly odd, but the ape wasn't showing any signs of aggression towards the other apes. In fact, most of the other apes seemed to be hiding and sleeping in the corners of their own rooms, as if they were trying to keep away from the aggressive ape. I decided to head back and begin logging in this new information. I began typing away on my research documents. Update. Subject 8 reacted very hostile after receiving injection formula number 8. The ape began to show erratic and aggressive behavior towards me and has an unusually large appetite. It devours several servings of food and demands more. Subject 8 will be left in isolation for the next few hours until further observations can be made. After I finished typing in the update, I went into deep thought again and spaced out. I checked my computer to see how much time had passed. One hour had gone by and there were some new forms of food on my work table. There were more bags of jerky, about eight more, and several bags of chips that were all empty, as well as a freshly opened bag of cookies, one of which I had in my right hand. I suddenly felt very hungry and began to finish off the cookies. I was starting to feel the hunger. I had a strong craving, a craving for meat, one that I would not be able to satisfy until my work was done for the night. As strange as it was, I decided that it would be best to end work early for the night and go and try and find some real food to eat. I went back to check the experiment rooms, but what I saw left me in shock. I saw five of the eight doors open and a rotten smell was emerging from them. I began looking in each of the rooms and I saw blood and fecal matter splattered across all of them. I immediately felt sick and began to vomit on the floor of room two. The apes were gone from the room, but hair and signs of a struggle were clearly visible. The doors looked like they'd been torn from their hinges. I nearly jumped out of my skin as I heard the loudest shriek I'd ever heard in my life come from room 8. And then 
I heard that horrible sound. Subject 8 was pounding furiously on its chest, and I began to hear more of the shrieks and shrieking coming from room 8. I began to hear bones snapping, tendons tearing, the horrible sounds of body parts being ripped apart filled the hallway, and I began to feel true terror. What the fuck had happened to Subject 8? I slowly peered in through the edge of the room, and what I saw made me flee and shut the main hallway door behind me. I saw Subject 8 eating the remains of the other apes and trying to crack the other ape's head open. The other apes were in a pile, muscles and tendons having been torn off of their bones and devoured savagely, each of their skulls having been pounded open and their brains removed. It was now devouring the brain of its last subject. I didn't have time to think. I ran out of the hallway and slammed the hallway door behind me. Subject 8 began to run out of its room and slammed its body against the door. Thankfully, this door was much sturdier than the doors that contained the subjects. I began to barricade the door. I moved shelves and cupboards in front of it. I began to place boxes in front of the cupboards and blocked off the sides to the door as well to help prevent it from opening. I began frantically writing up a new Update on my research. Update. Subject 8 has broken free from its room and has begun to kill and consume the other subjects. Subject 8 is showing irrational aggression and has a taste for meat. This test has failed and I am requesting immediate assistance. I repeat, immediate assistance. I submitted the update to the database and began to pack my things. I grabbed a trash can and swept the empty bags into it. I packed up my laptop bag and began to grab my coat. Right as I was about to leave the lab, I entered into another deep thought and spaced out again. When I regained focus, the alarm had been triggered. The alarm we have set if a disease outbreak has occurred. But what I saw next horrified me more than anything I had seen yet. I saw on the floor next to the alarm lever was my dead lab partner. He'd gone home for the night, but must have come back to check up on me. Both of his arms were ripped off and his face was badly beaten. I tried to help him, but then I saw the blood on my hands. My arms were drenched in blood and I noticed that my lips were covered in blood as well. It was then that I noticed that his arms had been placed beside him and I could see teeth marks on them, human teeth marks. I began to cry in the realization that the formula from test eight had turned me into some form of monster. These moments of deep thought I'd been having were moments of enraged hunger that was quickly causing my mind to deteriorate. I began to hear more banging coming from within the testing hallway. I peered through one of the windows to the hall and saw two more subjects. Subject 7 and 3 had both joined Subject 8 in trying to break down the door. It was at this moment that I ripped out my laptop from my bag and began to write up the events of this evening. Test 8 has brought this entire experiment crashing down, and my research has concluded. The enzymes within Serum 8 have created a disease that causes the brain to deteriorate and demands a high caloric intake to satisfy the hunger that is induced. This disease is contagious and will most likely be unable to be contained. If you are reading this now, run. Subjects 3, 7 and 8 have likely all broken free and are roaming around. 
killing and eating everything in sight and infecting new hosts. My mind is starting to go blank and I am feeling the hunger as well. Please, if you are reading this now, take shelter. It won't be long before I'm loose as well and have infected more of you with this disease. The three subjects are about to break through the door as I type this. If you are bitten, and if you have any heart for humanity, please isolate yourself from everyone else. Because when you begin to experience those deep thoughts and begin to space out, everyone around you will suffer a terrible fate.